into the 21st century. I give you all my cards. This should be an Olympic event. Look out, Steve Redgrave, mate. Just think people are going to bath in this. So here's our Stone Age house. All nice and cosy, fire in the middle, except it's not cosy, there's no roof. We better put one on. Got a few timbers on there, but this is the Orkney Islands. There's no timber, there's no trees. So they use whale bones and then put some sort of hides or sheeting material. It would have been hides, that's all they've got. Followed by big lumps of turf. The same turf, probably, that they used to use to burn in the fire. There's the walls at the side. And here's our fire down there. Look, there's the fireplace. Everything's around the fireplace. So we'll put a couple of characters in. A couple of put, put a couple of Neolithic types in. Neolithic nose, Neolithic hairdo. I can see that. I don't, I don't know if I can see it. But anyway, there's another one. Put that little eye in. They're all over the place. They're wild, these people. But it wasn't a wild civilization. This is a nice little dwelling. Here's the fire. Fire, fire. Lots of smoke, lots of smoke. Look, it heats the whole room. But we've just covered it, we've covered it up with a roof. Where does that smoke go? I don't see any evidence of a chimney. Of course there isn't. There's no chimney here. What must it really have been like to live in this sort of situation before somebody invented some technology to get rid of the smoke? 100 years ago, how long would it take to boil a kettle with this? Well, let's have a look. First, we need some heat. And the heat here is a fire. And we've got to get this fire going. And to do that, we've got to get this bellows going. We've got to get some air through it. We've got to get a nice blaze going. Now, this is a daily task performed by the lady of the house, who would have to run the house, clean the house, all with the hot water generated in this kettle. Now, this is work. I've done I'm tired, with, I'm, wor I'm worked out already, and we haven't even started to scrub floors and scrub chairs. And you just see those little old Victorian ladies coming round in the morning for the cappuccinos with biceps about a foot wide. Well, I think it's perhaps getting a little bit too hot. But where's the off button? Where's the off button? No switch, no button. Because there's no in instant cutoff. It's all got to be worked at. Just too hot for me. The fire is still central, but built high against a brick wall, the beginnings of the fireplace. And they had other lateral thinking ideas to maximize their comfort. I'm bringing a supplementary heat source into an ancient Orkney croft. In fact, a pair of sheep each day gives off heat energy equivalent to more than 200 watts. I'd call them a mini version of a two-bar fire. With a front loader, we bung our washing into the drum like that and whack it inside, and we've got an incredible rubber seal that holds the washing and all that water inside. And we've got this fantastic, nice, lifestyle, smooth white exterior. But inside, we've got this whacking great drum with a washing inside it that permanently wants to get down, gravity being what it is. The washing wants to push that drum all the, down all the time as it spins round. So we've got two whacking great weights, top and bottom, to stabilise the whole thing so the whole thing doesn't go vibrating off. But I can show you in a much better way, really. Let's have a proper look inside. Now here's our drum with all the washing in it, and here's down there is a little motor, and that little motor will get hold of the drum and shake it all about with your washing inside if it wasn't for these big concrete lumps here, which are counterbalances to stop the whole thing vibrating away. Oops, I've almost forgot my washing. <sighs> Perfect. Before the invention of the tin opener, what weapon would you have used to get into something like this? This is a copy of a, of a tin from 200 years ago. It's been made specially for us, and it's quite basic, steel sheet. So we'll have a go at getting into it. What weapon do you think we ought to use, Mike? I think we'll go for the bayonet first. Well, go on, then you get it out <laughs> of the sheet there. I just happen to have brought a big lump hammer with me, as you do in the jungle. Soldiers so, used anything sharp to force an entry, and the bayonet needed a fair bit of patience. Look. Let's 
going to take us all day to get into this. Well, it is. Come here a minute. Come here. Come here. If you hadn't already lost your fingers, the bayonet would get you your dinner eventually. Let's see how all the international food we consume actually races to us before it has time to go off. Using the ingredients of a salad as the competitors, I'll show you all the ways they use to race to Britain, trying to be first to the customer. The race is on. We've got a little lettuce man here, and he's the first contestant. And he's off from Israel, of all places, the other end of the Mediterranean. And he's joined by all his little chums leaping in the boxes and the crates, which go into even bigger crates. And these crates go into one of the massive freezer lorries, like the one I'm drawing on, that hurtle across Europe. It's joined by our friends, tomatoes from Spain. Yes, yeah, some of that fruit and veg gets even quicker to our table by coming on a plane. And later on, down here, ships pop right into it. And as the marathon comes to a close, our little British veggie man joins in, because he's just down the street, really, isn't he? He might not have far to come, but he can still be pipped at the post because of his price. British veggie man might not be the first off the shelves. It's us, the consumers, that determine this whole process. It's us that decide which product leaves the shelves the fastest. The next leap in design came from this, the hovercraft. It was a revolutionary moment. Watching the first hovercraft in the early 60s, Swedish inventor Carl Dahlman became obsessed with the idea of making a lawnmower without wheels. But invention is never easy. And perhaps the best way to show you that is for me to have a go at replicating his original prototype, which used a two-stroke engine and a dustbin lid. This is an outboard motor from a boat, but it's the same vintage, it's 1960, something like that. What we've got to do is, is get rid of the nautical bit, take the engine here, right off the bod part, and make our own prototype fly motor. The first thing I've got to do is to get at the engine. Oh, it's moving. It's moving. Somebody's moved. And let's just turn right this round and have a look at it. So somehow we've got to put on here a fan or cutting blades to simulate the action of a, of a fly mower. Now, this is where the invention begins. This is the standard engine, but what we need to do is make a base plate to fix this to our prototype. But how did we keep ourselves entertained before modern technology? It's sure it's true when you say, I love you. It's a sin to tell a lie. Millions of hearts have been broken just because these words were spoken. And in the days before telly and stereo and radio, exactly how did we keep entertained in the home? Well, there was storytelling and book reading and games. But my favorite, from the 1800s, people sat around singing at pianos like this. Be sure it's true when you say, I love you. It's a sin, a doggone sin to tell a lie. Hey, thanks, Fats.